So today we're going to talk about how to change your current boyfriend from something casual to something serious. And I really want you to pay attention for those ladies who find themselves in a relationship where they're frustrated. Maybe you're in something that is casual and you want it to be serious. Now, what I've observed for many people out in the dating marketplace is they are experiencing, whether we call them casual relationships or situationships. And let's define the two. Actually, there's more than that. There's friends with benefits, there's hooking up, there's situationships, there's casual relationships, and then of course there's significant or serious relationships. Situationships are basically where two people are connecting on a regular basis, which usually includes physical intimacy, but there isn't any real label on the relationship. In other words, you don't call each other boyfriend and girlfriend, you don't have a regular set time that you see each other. There's a lot of ambiguity. In fact, many of you are experiencing what's known as stable ambiguity. And if you're not familiar with that term, someone write that down for us. Stable ambiguity and also include the words Esther Perel. I want you to go and find this video. I want you to Google Esther Perel stable ambiguity and, and learn about this because what stable ambiguity is, is where you're having a consistent connection with someone. Well, actually it's not even that consistent, but you're having regular connection with one person, but it's ambiguous as to the definition of what the two of you are going to be exploring together. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. So stick with me for a second. Casual relationships is where there's an agreement to monogamy and exclusivity. Now, those are actually two different things, and let me explain. Monogamy simply means not agreeing to not have sex with other people. That's what monogamy is. Exclusivity is the agreement to not to explore getting to know another human being while you're in this dynamic. Now, many of you know that I prefer when it comes to dating is to date one person at a time, okay? Date one person at a time. Now, some people believe that's exclusivity. That's not exclusivity. That's called keeping yourself in your own lane kind of thing. And what I mean to say is dating multiple people at the same time can be incredibly distracting. It can be incredibly confusing. It can create uncertainty in a person's life. And worse, many people are experiencing what's known as FOMO, which is fear of missing out. Hence, they want to date other people, multiple people at the same time. Or worse, you're dating multiple people at the same time because you're afraid to get attached to a person that may be wrong for you and you need to spread yourself out, okay? I'm not a big fan of that. Dating one person at a time isn't exclusivity. Exclusivity is the agreement not to explore any new connections with another human being. It agrees to not date another human being. But the difference is if there's an agreement versus a way of operating. I prefer to date one person at a time. And what I mean is if you choose to see someone more than three times, that's the time, and you're choosing to see someone more, I believe in dating one person at a time. Meeting a person isn't the same as dating, okay? But this is critically important to understand this. So casual relationships are an agreement to monogamy and agreement to exclusivity. The reason that makes them casual is that there's no defined goal. There is no defined goal. Now, I am sure many of you women have heard the men who say, oh my God, you're the most amazing person in my life. You, We connected so many levels. Oh my God, I want you to become my wife. We need to be boyfriend and girlfriend, yada, yada, yada. They say all of these things before physical intimacy. It fascinates me how many men will say all this garbage and the minute there's physical intimacy, how they seem to run away from all the promises they made. Isn't it fascinating? Now, some people call this love bombing, um, okay, so it's got a unique term to it, but this has been happening for eons, okay? It just used to be if a man wanted to get laid, he had to get married. He had to make the ultimate serious commitment, okay? Now men don't have to make any commitment to have physical intimacy. In fact, many of you will agree to situations. You'll agree to hooking up. You'll agree to friends with benefits. You'll agree to situationships. You'll agree to even casual relationships. 
but I'm here to encourage something more serious. Okay, so I want to differentiate between those men who have a short-term mating strategy versus a long-term mating strategy. See, a person who has a long-term mating strategy, they are actually evaluating whether or not you could actually fit into his life. Another way of putting it is, are you wife material? Okay. He is operating from this place. So he's not going from one person to the next to the next. Now he might be evaluating many people because the reality is that dating today is like, it's like a numbers game, you know, with our dating apps, you know what I mean? We, we, you connect with someone, you don't know if there's going to be any real connection. It fizzles out. You do it again and again, and again, for those like myself who have a long-term mating strategy, it's just as equally frustrating for those of you who also have a long-term mating strategy. However, many of you are connecting with men with a short-term mating strategy. What a short-term mating strategy usually is a man who wants companionship, who wants connection, who wants physical intimacy, but they want it on their terms. They don't really want significant commitment because they're oftentimes emotionally wounded or broken. I would roughly say 60% of really 60% of the population of men and women alike are emotionally dysfunctional. 20% have clinical issues, whether it's narcissism or borderline type of issues. Um, and probably only 20% of the population, men and women alike, are truly emotionally healthy, have good relationship skills, have good communication skills, have good conflict resolution skills. See, women tend to want commitment more so than men. It's so fascinating to me. There's a line that says, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Well, think about that. And it used to be if a man wanted sex, he had to commit. Now we don't have to commit. It's kind of fascinating how this is the norm today. See, I'm all about people becoming a we or an us versus being in a relationship where there's a lot of uncertainty. And so the reason why casual are so popular is because you don't have to go all in. Ultimately, think about it. Think about what all in means. It means I'm going to be there for you when you're sick. If you're struggling financially, we're together. We're in it as a team. But Jonathan, I don't want to be a nurse or a purse. See, we're all many humans, women and men alike, are seeking that perfection type relationship without the understanding that a relationship is not just about being there for the good times, it's about being there in the not so good times. And here's the challenge many of you ladies have to recognize. I said earlier, there's a lot of dysfunctional human beings. And what I mean by that, they're emotionally wounded, they're emotionally broken, they're struggling internally. And so, you know, the reason why casual is so popular because it doesn't require going all in. And casual can take a variety of different forms, but the, ultimately the difference say between casual and situationships is at least casual, you have the label of boyfriend and girlfriend, but what's missing is a game plan, is a game plan. See, Today, we can just try on relationships for size. You can spend a year or two with a person just to, to feel that companionship, connection, and physical intimacy without ever really intentionally going all in. So I'm many of you know I'm fascinated with a TV show called Love is Blind. And why I want to bring this up at this moment is it's an incubator of what I think I observe in the general dating marketplace. But one of the things that fascinates me in this show, if you're not familiar with the Netflix series called Love is Blind, it's where two people are don't physically get to see each other. They're talking through a partition to get to know one another. And then usually the man has to propose the other woman or to, excuse me, to the woman to get to physically see each other. And then they go on a honeymoon and then they live together for something like four weeks, okay? Why am I bringing this up? Ladies, if you're having physical intimacy with a man, 
and you are seriously considering a long-term relationship with this person, I think couples should spend at a minimum of two weeks in each other's homes, in each other's homes, living life in their home. You live life in their home, just like in um, Love is Blind. And I prefer that this happen very early on in the process. Now, this is difficult for some of those of you that do the long distance dynamics because that has an inherent built-in bubble effect. What I mean is fantasy effect because it's like vacation. I'm not talking about those that live hundreds, if not thousands of miles apart. I'm th talking about those couples that actually live in the general vicinity of one another. Why? Because what's the purpose of exploring? being in a relationship if you're not going to explore it from a long-term perspective. So why not do it earlier rather than later? But Jonathan, I have children in my home and I have these other things. Well, guess what? This is about having, this is a, listen, if two people are physical, okay, let me even take this another step. I'm doing a rabbit hole for a second. Excuse me. If two people are kissing one another, that's a very intimate act, believe it or not. And if two people are physically having sex with one another, I guess you need to be physical when you're having sex, but when you're having physical intimacy, one another, sex, excuse me, that's a very intimate act. You can get radically bonded to another human being. And so having a grown-up conversation, viewing it from a grown-up perspective, can save years and years of heartache. So what do you need to do? So let me say this. Women are oftentimes afraid to ask for what they want in relationship. Many of you ladies are wearing duct tape on your mouth. You're afraid to ask for what you want. You're afraid to make a stand for what you want. If you're not familiar with my book, what the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Okay, chapter one, speak your truth, do it with kindness. Chapter nine, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Why I'm bringing all this up is stop being afraid to ask for what you want. If you want to change something from casual to serious, if you want to shift this dynamic, then it requires... If, by the way, ladies, if you're having physical intimacy with a man, you have every right to make requests. And it starts through radical honesty. Now, what is radical honesty? It's being vulnerable. It's being authentic. It's being transparent. See, that's the essence of speaking your truth. And when you're with the right person, they are... They are actively listening. They care. They want to move this forward. If you're with the right person, the wrong person will run away. But Jonathan, I'm afraid he's going to run away. Yeah, the wrong person will run away. Next is laying your cards on the table. This requires a complete understanding of your past experiences, your past relationships, having full disclosure about the intricacies of past relationships, because our past gives us an indication of how someone operates in their present life. So laying your cards on the table is sharing a bit of your past. But Jonathan, he told me this is private. He doesn't share those things. Ladies, if the penis goes inside the vagina on a regular basis, you have every right to find out about his past. He is, that's like that's like an employer telling an employer, I'm not going to tell you where I used to work prior to this. Our physical life is our most sacred component. Our, but and yet in work, we accept that, but not in our personal life. We won't accept that sacredness. Of, of, of really, I don't want to use the word protecting yourself, but honoring yourself before you give yourself to another human being. So laying on your laying the cards on the table and the rules of engagement. So I'm going to repeat this. Radical honesty, laying your cards on the table. Rules of engagement establishes the type of relationship you seek. See, you should do this before you become physically intimate with someone. Rules of engagement, the type of relationship you seek. I speak about this frequently. 
I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both are in our personal and our professional life. Intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together, or getting married. That is the standard I see. Now, could I adapt that standard for someone? Absolutely. If it's not perfectly aligned and there's other things, you know, compromise is saying, well, I'll take this good and I can shift a little bit of this, okay? The rules of engagement is how you take something from casual to serious. And if you aren't prepared to establish what it is you want, and why I said earlier, the importance to live in each other's lives for a bit is to really determine if you're compatible with one another. Shouldn't we be doing this sooner rather than later? I know this is difficult because we're meeting total strangers. We know nothing about them. Folks, this is why dating is a long drawn out version of friends with benefits, why it's situationships, why it's casual, because we are meeting total strangers. We don't know who they really are. But our current dating mark, our current dating marketplace and structure makes it so. I'm going to rewind for a second. This is how you know a person is. How's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. Most everybody is focused on the trivial things and not the deeper things that cause real, true human bonding. So if you want to take your relationship from casual to serious, Read this book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. This is literally the blueprint of taking your relationship from casual to serious. It's about having those radical, those essential conversations for a lifetime of love. And ladies, you, you have something sacred. I mean, men want physical intimacy. You have every right to establish your standard before you're physically intimate with someone. You have every right to ask for that standard. And if you don't, then you only have yourself to blame. And I don't mean this as a blame game. I'm simply encouraging you to step into your sovereignty, to step into your power. You know, it's interesting. I just got a call from a client the other day, Jonathan. She's, she told me she's in the most amazing relationship she ever had. They are planning on moving in together. They are Establish, having conversations about marriage. And why I'm sharing this with you is I only take on clients who are fully prepared to step into that desire of wanting a significant relationship. If you want a significant, listen, dating is not for the faint of heart. It is not. If you want it, you have to make Herculean effort. But Jonathan, all the fantasies tell me it should just be easy. I'm expecting it to be easy. A man is supposed to sweep me off the feet and claim me, and I can just lean back. That's all garbage. If you want something, just like in your professional life, if you want something, you go after it. And if you want something serious, then you establish you establish the radical honesty, uh, laying your cards on the table, rules of engagement before you ever even, you establish your long-term mating strategy before you ever entertain someone. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If you want to change it, change your own behavior on how you view relationships and have a long-term mating strategy using the techniques in the books I recommend. All right, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, schedule a discovery call with me. There's a link below to, uh, join, uh, to schedule a discovery call, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to check out all the books I recommend, to follow me on Instagram, to get my dating vows, and to join my mailing list, all listed below. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.